do you think the president has to do to make this speech successful? Well, <clears throat> what he has to do to make it successful, um, he, I, 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 it depends on what his aim is. I think his aim is probably just to get through the thing and get it over with without a disaster. But if... If it's in terms of unity, let's look at what the president has done in the past. He has stuck to the script, those written teleprompter scripts. He did it in Davos, but then he goes and declares on Twitter that, oh, my speech was well received. So overall, in terms of your expectations, has he lowered the bar to the extent that if he just doesn't go off the rails Tuesday night, this is considered a big win? And, and even more broadly, Hendrick, has he redefined in some way expectations for a president? Oh, in every way, in every way. Um, the last time he gave a speech like this, I guess, was early in the, in the administration. He, he's given one of these speeches before. And the fact that he got through it without, um, without getting, uh, without major embarrassment was acclaimed as a victory and as showing that, that maybe things were going to be okay after all. Mm. Uh, there's been a lot of water under the bridge since then. Right. So which, which, how much will do, you, do you expect that will weigh in the minds of those that are listening, whether it's those on the floor of Congress or if they, uh, those that are on the other side of a television watching? I mean, you, you cannot disassociate the president with what he says all the time and then what he puts forward in a speech. Yeah, and people will be looking for, the, the, he he's very seldom speaks in a way that anybody can tell what he's going to say ahead of time. So people are going to be looking for that, and um, they're going to be looking for um, what, w can he get through it? Hmm. Uh, will, he, will he go off script? Will he, uh, and, and after the speech, will he undermine it mm -hmm, with a series mm -hmm. of tweets? It's supposed to be a disciplinary uh, a, uh, exercise. Yeah. So well, the State of the Union. The, the State of the Union speeches are always where the president puts forward policy in some detail. And we have seen over the last year that this president can be light on the details when it comes to policy, if not contradictory to what his administration is putting forward. That said, do you expect him to spend time on the economic achievements? I mean, he doesn't he have a good story to tell on that. Uh, he does. We have a strong economy, uh, although that's largely left over from uh, the, the delayed effects of the Obama administration. It'll certainly be boastful, maybe not as boastful as he would be uh, if he wasn't reading a script, uh, but it will be boastful and and it will be it will be an attempt at being presidential. Mm. The last time the last time he gave a speech like uh, to the, the the only other time he's given a speech to a joint session of Congress, uh, it was acclaimed as wow, it's presidential. He actually sounded sort of like a normal person, but there is nothing normal about this administration and so it'll there'll also be a, people watching curiously to see what form the train wreck takes. Hmm. Um, Republican strategists say, look, this is a chance for the president to talk about his achievements without mentioning the escalating Russia investigation. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's going to resist injecting some sort of a spin or, you know, saying repeatedly no collusion, no collusion, you know, during this speech? Uh, well, everybody in the White House is going to be sitting at the edge of their chairs wondering about that. It's not going to be uh, it's not going to be in the prepared text. The question is, is he going to wander off? Uh, under the under the spur of the moment, and no one can know that. No one can know what this man is going to do next. It's one of the reasons that he's so dangerous. Mm. There are analysts uh, who have drawn parallels between Trump and Nixon presidencies. Mm. And at President Nixon's State of the Union address back in 1974, he was done with the speech. He'd closed his notes. Then he decided to add these remarks. Let's listen. I have provided the prosecutor voluntarily a great deal of material. I believe that I have provided all the material that he needs to conclude his investigations and to proceed to prosecute the guilty and to clear the innocent. I believe the time has come to bring that investigation and the other investigations of this matter to an end. One year of Watergate is enough. 
So to your point, Hendrik, you said that there won't be anything scripted for the president on the Russia investigation. But if you watch President Nixon there, he was clearly reading off a teleprompter. Whether he himself added that in some way or the speechwriter did, we, we can't know. Could Trump have a similar Nixonian moment here? Well, he could, of course. Uh, he's Nixon is always the comparison that's that's drawn, but Nixon was normal compared to to uh, to Trump. So, any people will be watching to see what happens. That's really weird. You remember what uh, George W. Bush said after listening to the inaugural address? He said that was some weird hmm. s word. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the spectacle of the State of the Union because there's always a lot of drama with it. We've got some Democrats who are inviting DACA uh, recipients as their guests. Others are planning to wear black in support of the Me Too movement. Um, you can remember when candidate Trump brought four Bill Clinton harassment accusers to a debate against Hillary Clinton. Do you think he's going to be affected by the spectacle of it all? That he's going to be affected by it? Mm -hmm. I'm sure that, that they're giving a lot of thought to what the spectacle should be. In, in that other speech to a joint session, um, the high moment was the widow of a soldier. Uh, he's going to, there'll be people in the balcony that he's going to use as props uh, to, to make his points. Uh, that's, a, that's a custom that was started by the Reagan uh, speech writing office. Hmm. Uh, came a little bit after ours. I wish we'd thought of it. <laughs> um, I, can I ask you uh, in just one or two words, Hendrik, what is the state of our union in your mind? Chaotic and, and dangerous and unsettled and unhappy. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.